where the leader of the Islamic Revolution holds the U.S. responsible for murder, warmongering, and insecurity in parts of the world, including in Syria, occupied Palestine, and Yemen. Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei described the U.S. as a, quote, failed model for the human community. He noted that human values such as health, justice, and security are trampled upon in the U.S. more than in any other place. He said Washington is struggling with its own numerous domestic problems, and there is a huge gap between people of different social strata. Ayatollah Khamenei said there are more hungry and homeless people there than in any other country. The leader said one in five American children is hungry, as figures suggest, not to mention high insecurity and crime rates in that country. We're going to cross over to Michigan, joined by senior editor of Veterans Today, Gordon Duff, and talk about uh, that situation as far as the insecurity that Washington is responsible for in the world and at the same time seemingly neglecting their own at home. Your take on this. Well, we've been in free fall here in the U.S. now. <coughs> and excuse me, coughing. Uh, sure. I could be accused of being a COVID spreader, but... Uh, uh, there's few people in the world that understand exactly what we're dealing with here and the division that's going on. Uh, we have 90% of the U.S. is at relative peace, but the administration in Washington, the current regime, we're going to have to call it a regime from now on, uh, is trying to start a civil war in this country. Uh, the president called last week for armed thugs and militia types to... Uh, protect the polling places from liberal voters. Uh, it's, uh, our postal system, we haven't had mail here in days. Uh, our post offices uh, took their sorters offline. Uh, we go out to the mailbox, no medication, no government checks, and we live on government checks here. Uh, around the world, you know, we started in Syria, and I've been dealing with Syria over the last couple of days American oil companies closely tied to the president, backed by U.S. military, uh, and working with Kurdish and Israeli occupation forces are taking large swaths of Syria and moving into Iraq. Uh, Trump this morning wants to go after Iraq's oil. He wants to seize the Kirkuk oil field, which is the largest oil field in the world. In Iraq, it plans to do it militarily as a base against Iran. Things are that far, and it's generally not being reported. Uh, certainly not, not to the degree of what's happening in Syria, these open confrontations with the U.S. involved in absolute theft of everything. They've stolen and destroyed wheat crops for the past three or four years. The entire wheat crops of Syria simply sold them, profiteering. You know, we can go back to, I was in Iraq 2005 to 2007, and it was an open secret that uh, Iraq's oil was being given to British Petroleum and, uh, and Exxon. It was being shipped out on pipeline through Turkey. That government was receiving, key members of that government were receiving billions of payoffs and being shipped into the Mediterranean at, at, a, uh, at the offloading port at Sehan. Ship after ship after ship. Easy to, to check records. The ships were there loading up and the oil company of uh, Iraq was told no ships were there. They were loaded and sailed off super tanker after super tanker for a week, for years. None of it was ever paid for. They're doing the same thing to the extent they can in Syria. They have to develop the oil fields to do it. And uh, in the process, the Caesar Act is, is intended to starve and freeze the people of uh, Syria, but they're doing the exact same thing, as you have mentioned, in Yemen, but they're doing it in Venezuela as well and around the world. This is a, a war of cruelty, a war of insanity. It's a, a, we're in a nation here where, to a large extent, we're being run by psychopaths. Uh, these are moral questions, simple questions of right and wrong. Uh, we're being run by anti-science people, by ignorant racists, by conspiracy theorists. Uh, this is a human disaster. And here in the US, <clears throat> because of our plenty, all but 
the 40 million that are slowly becoming homeless and starving, the 40 million that are in absolute poverty in this country who are being thrown out of their homes, 40 million people, and the media won't talk about it, they won't show it. More people than live in most nations around this world in the U.S. are reaching the point of starvation, begging for food. And we've, we've got about 180,000 dead right now and another 100,000 dying. And that's being reported. It's being reported and openly denied. <clears throat> it's very, very real. We've got three to five million Asian Americans, people my age and younger even, who are in nursing homes, haven't seen families in six months, anyone in six months. What condition are they in? How many are being mistreated? How many are covered with bed sores? How many are starving to death in nursing homes where no one can see where they are, what, what's happening? Well, do you see and anything no changing? Do you see things ch turning around? Gordon, a lot of what you have said, um, of course, and it, unfortunately, is not anything new. Uh, with well, no this year, with 2020, I just want to say, of course, with COVID-19, obviously, there are a lot of things that have changed in that sense. But when we're talking about, whether we're talking about um, uh, supporting um, um, uh, the overthrow or of a rightly elected governments. I mean, this is not something new in the U.S.'s history. Where is this going? It, it seems, though, that it has reached um, just a, a different level in its intensity and at the same time of the internal problems that the U.S. is having itself. Where is this going? I had a six-hour interview about a week ago with one of the agencies that has arrested you in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, had, to, had to explain to them that uh, they're looking for individuals to blame in the U.S. for causing this. Is the are the Russians secretly running the U.S.? Gangsters have been running the the U.S. for decades and decades, maybe two centuries, but certainly they run everything in the United States, and they run the world banking system, they run the world's armament system, they run the United Nations, they run, they run every single institution in the world. And of course, the mainstream media, all of it and all of the alternative media, with very, very few exceptions. It's, a, it's world organized crime, it's generations old, maybe even centuries old. So do you think and, that, the, as you said, the agency, well, we're talking about the FBI, uh, do you think that oh, yeah. uh, r really that they are looking into this and they really want to get to the root of um, what's going on here? Um, because the, there are many analyses about what's going on, and of course, many times it's said that it's a conspiracy theory. So um, are there, I guess the question would be then, uh, those who are patriots, are they uh, are enough in numbers, as far as those with the national perspective, nationalist perspective, to try to counter what is uh, going on, not only in the United States, but in the world? That answer is absolutely no. Uh, in order to understand what's going on, you have to be willing to learn history, you have to be able to pay attention, you have to understand banking, and you have to understand counterintelligence as well. This idea that you can arrest a few kooks, you can pick up Steve Bannon or Roger Stone, and somehow all of this is going away, you're getting the, it's called the, it's a low-hanging fruit. Uh, we need a house cleaning here that would be brutal. This country won't survive without it. Okay. Uh, well, Gordon, I'd love to talk to you a little bit more about this sometime. Again, uh, we're out of time right now. Appreciate you being with us. Out of Michigan, Senior Editor of Veterans Today, Gordon Duff.